your honeybees died because you didn't watch my videos or maybe you watched my videos and you didn't take my advice, you didn't take me seriously. But from somebody that has had honeybees killed by crop farmers, actually witnessed my honeybees dying from chemicals that crop farmers had sprayed in the area and having the state of Michigan send an inspector out, take samples and then a month later, tell me my bees died from the chemicals a crop farmer used. And then a month after that, they told me the crop farmer did nothing wrong. Our government is corrupt. Our government works for the corporations. And your, your supply companies for beekeepers, they make a lot of money selling you all these products to treat for varroa mites. This is, you know, better bee again. And this is what they say to do to get rid of your varroa mites. It's a whole year worth of treatments. And I added it all up. It's like $50, $60 worth of stuff per hive. Now, can you imagine spending $50, $60 in that range per colony or per hive every year to get rid of varroa mites? Okay, so they want you to believe the varroa mites are the biggest issue. And that's the reason why your honeybees die every year. That's bullshit. That's total bullshit. It's the toxic chemicals. I've had a honeybee colonies die because of crop farmers chemicals sprayed in my area, 150 yards south of me on a windy day. And of course, the government's going to lie. And they, they claim the honeybees went out to that field and picked up the chemicals, brought it back to the hive. No, the chemicals blew into my hive, got into my, my hive, killed my nurse bees, and killed a lot of my queens. So... You can't avoid the chemicals if you have crop farmers in your area. So my bees die throughout the winter because of all the chemicals in their hive, all right? The cluster gets smaller as winter progresses. That's why I constantly monitor the size of my clusters all winter long. When it's really cold outside, I've got colonies outside. I'll show you. All right, it's raining out right now. That's one group of bees I have. I have like 100 colonies. And I have another group out here, but I can't see them from here. It's Monday, February 27th. Uh, Friday, February 24th, I made a video calling guys a bunch of stupid idiots. Because you guys, you don't check your colonies during the winter. And you think it's the varroa mites. You treat for varroa mites. And you wait until the spring to see how many colonies you have. Your bees are dying through winter because they don't live very long. The toxic chemical shortens their life. If a honeybee lives five to six months during the winter, you can subtract a month for the toxic chemicals. So if you have a long winter, a long hard winter, your colonies are going to die and they're going to get small. And if they're outside, the cold temperatures are going to kill the colony because they can't generate enough heat to keep themselves warm. So... I went through, I checked my colonies outside Friday morning, made a video, and I knew that one colony was small, it was still doing all right, so Saturday morning, that's one of the first ones I checked at 9 o'clock, and sure enough, 78 was chilled, and I didn't make a video of it, because I already have videos on my YouTube channel showing you how I uh, deal with chilled colonies. How many dead outs do you guys have? That could have been saved. If you check your colonies every single morning, if that cluster had gotten chilled overnight, it's actually colder early in the morning than it is during the night. The temperatures cool off. So if you check your bees around 8, 9 o'clock in the morning, there's a good chance you're going to save their life. If you find a dead out, it may not be a dead out. Okay? So what you do is, the first thing you do, is you want to remove... The hive from the bottom screen. There's going to be a lot of dead bees down there. Take your bottom screen out. Clean out the dead bees. Put the hive back on the bottom screen. And then what you do is you... Uh, I'll, I'll open this up. This one right here is going to have... I've lost brood in it. The queen is still alive. And I saw her warm up that morning, Saturday morning. All right. Say, for instance, you have a dead out. The bees aren't moving. Remove all the frames that don't have any bees on them. If you have a few frames that have a few bees on them, this is after you've cleaned out the bottom screen. Go ahead, knock the bees off, get them down to the bottom screen. And what you're going to do is, see I have a hair dryer here. 
plug in the hair dryer, put it on low setting. And I've actually done this and made a video of this. But I didn't do it Saturday because I was more concerned about saving this colony than I was anything else. What you do is you, you separate the frames, allow a few inches in between. And bees are going to fall. They're going to fall off the frames down to the bottom screen. So you're heating up the side of the frames and you're also heating the bees on the bottom screen. Okay, and then you're going to, after about five minutes or so of doing that, you're going to see these bees are pissed because they suffered a setback. I know they lost a lot of brood. So they're pissed for me opening this up. I need to do, uh, make sure the queen is still alive. She was alive Saturday morning when I put the hair dryer on them. So uh, you're separating the frames, and bees are going to fall off the cluster down to the bottom screen. So you're heating up, very gently heating up the side of your frames. And then when you see them start moving around, that's when you can put the hive back together. And then make sure you have ventilation holes at the top of the hive. And you put your hair dryer down here at the bottom and you just keep blowing in warm air. And then see, I have I have upper shim here. I would be blowing in warm air, and I put my hand up here, and the air coming out. Let's see how warm it is. It's going to be cold because you're trying to heat up the whole hive. And just to show you what happened here, well, they had like two or three frames of brood, and I thought they would be all right, but I kind of questioned whether they would make it through another cold night, and I should have listened to my inner voice and I should have brought them in which I could have done I could have brought them in Friday and saved them from losing brood but anyway here here's the queen she was chilled overnight Friday night into Saturday morning and maybe they didn't lose the eggs but I'm sure that they've lost a lot of cat brood in here so they suffered a setback that's the hard thing bees have they have a warm-up and they start doing brood, and they think everything's okay, and then it cools off, and the bees can't can't maintain a temperature in the cluster because they've been dying. There was a lot of dead bees at the bottom of the hive, and it's not varroa mites, I'm telling you. Trust me, I'm telling you, it's not the varroa mites killing my bees. If it were varroa mites, I would have noticed it early in the winter. It's the toxic chemicals that are shortening the life of your bees. Okay, if the queen stops laying around November, and those bees will live five months without the toxic chemicals, subtract one month from those bees' life because of the toxic chemicals. So you got December, January, February, March. So end of February, early March, your bees are going to start dying. And if you don't get them restarted early spring, you're going to lose a lot of colonies. That's what the issue was last spring, is it didn't warm up. My, my colonies would not restart even with this, with this to die. AP23 pollen substitute. I put it in the hives. They still would not take it. They wouldn't restart. But this winter has been different. They've actually have had a lot of colonies that kept laying all winter long. And that's the thing with using acetic acid treating for varroa mites. It doesn't treat varroa mites into cat brood. So I'm sure probably a lot of colonies still have varroa mites. But there's not much you can do about it. I don't want to kill my bees using a toxic mite treatment. I use something that's not harmful to honeybees and acetic acid has never killed any of my queens formic pro killed 10 percent of my queens every time i use it and the second time i used it it didn't kill any varroa mites it just killed 10 percent of my queens so that's the issue with acetic acid and i see a lot of people i got videos on they're working on trying to do a better treatment with acetic acid but at the at the moment right now i'm waiting to see what happens okay so if you Find a colony that's actually not moving. You think it's a dead out. You could you could save it if it's the same day. So if you guys aren't doing that, I looked on YouTube. I don't see anybody else putting a hair dryer to a bunch of dead bees and reviving them. I'm the only person that does that. There's a lot of things I'm the only only beekeeper in the, in the world that I know of that does certain things, like bringing in colonies when they're too small for the cold temperatures. I live in Michigan. It's cold, okay? could be colder but it's not that bad so i can't complain all right so again a dead out may not be a dead out 
If you check it every day, and if you find dead bees or bees that aren't moving, bring them in. Put a hair dryer on them. Do what I tell you here. Clean out the bottom screen first because a lot of those bees, when you separate these frames, a lot of these bees are going to end up on the, the screen, the bottom screen. And you don't want a bunch of dead bees mixed in with your live bees because then you're going to think, well, they're all dead. No, they're not dead. So make sure you get rid of all the dead bees in the hive before you do that. And all the bees that end up in the bottom screen, you're going to see them. They'll start moving after you warm them up. And then when they start moving, put everything back together. Put a screen on the hive sheets. Here's the rest of the colony. See? The colony wasn't really that small, but apparently they still had an issue with the temperature. Okay? That's, that's the thing. How small does a cluster have to be for a certain temperature before they get chilled? That's... There's a lot of science behind that, and I don't understand all the science. It just takes years, years of experience before you understand. And I knew this colony here was close to being at an issue of being chilled overnight, okay? Thank you.